I'm Laura Lee McIntyre, Dean of the University of Oregon's College of Education. The College of Education is home to three academic departments, 14 research and outreach units, and passionate students and faculty. The University of Oregon is also home to the renowned Oregon Ducks football program, led by head coach Dan Lanning. This spring, we sat down at the state-of-the-art Autzen Stadium Complex to discuss his experience as an educator, his approach to community building, and the welcoming environment he's created for the team over the last year. So tell me a little bit about how you use your background in education with your students. It probably starts for me just being a continuous learner, right? Um, to be a great educator, I think that you always have to be looking for ways to improve. Uh, one, delivering the message, right? How you, how you can communicate that because there's so many forms of communication right now today that sit in our players' hands or, or on their phones. Uh, so I think you're trying to figure out, okay, how are other people doing it? And what's the best what's the best form of delivery? And then checking for understanding, right? We all know that's really important. So how are you, how are you doing that? What setting are you teaching your players in? Do you change that up? Certain environments might be good for a matter of time, but after a while they can become kind of stagnant. So you are a former elementary PE teacher. I love it because I think about coaches as teachers, especially when you have college students as your student athletes. So, so kind of what's that journey? All right, well, both my parents are teachers. Okay. I knew I wanted to coach like really early. So once I got done playing college football, I became an elementary PE teacher and I coached high school football at Park Hill South. But I kind of always had aspirations and a drive to maybe coach at a higher level. There weren't a lot of opportunities. I kind of had to create my own a little bit. And my first coaching job in college was becoming like a quality control assistant, basically pour coffee, uh, do whatever you need to do for 800 bucks a month. And at the time my wife was pregnant and we had a one-year-old, so it didn't make a lot of sense, but it worked out. And that was, that was my foot in the door. And then there's been a lot of stops since then. What I love about your story is that it shows persistence. And yeah. I think to be an educator, you've got to be persistent. And to be a teacher and to work with students, you've got to instill in them a sense of, of grit, even when things get challenging. So talk a little bit about how you balance that physical and mental health and wellness with yeah. your student athletes. Yeah, one thing that um, we've really incorporated here, and we actually just had a session last night, we do these get real sessions. The idea is that we kind of step away from football, maybe what is almost always our primary focus, and we start to focus on some other things. Um, talking about players why, what makes them tick, you know, who their biggest motivation is. You know, last night we really talked about living off the land and taking advantage of the resources you have in front of you. We change these get real topics pretty frequently for an opportunity to kind of tap in and have some awareness of where our guys are mentally and um, also just change the setting in the venue for us to be able to talk about things outside of football, which I think is it's really important to create that vulnerability, um, that connection. And when you know guys on a deeper level, it certainly allows you uh, the opportunity to push them further on the field. Um, when I think about what you've done here in a really short period of time, right? So one year, you have taken a whole new group of guys. So how do you think about instilling that sense of belongingness and creating that community with a bunch of transplants? Well, I think it starts with that. It starts with recognition. You know, look around the locker room and you're gonna see, I think we have 25 different states that were represented on our team, three different countries. Um, so it's a melting pot of people, right? Including coaching staff and then it's even more. So. I think taking the deep dive first off of recognition of, hey, look around our surroundings, guys. Every one of us is from somewhere different. Well, how are we going to create that connection? Um, you know, the sense of belonging, uh, I think it starts there. And really the get reels have been a big piece of that. Final question for you. If you could give your past self some advice, what would it be? That's really hard because I, I don't know that I would go about things a lot differently okay. other than enjoy the ride and trust the process. When you're ambitious and you're hungry and you have drive uh, to be great, sometimes you want it to come quicker than it needs to come. And uh, just knowing and recognizing that it's all part of the journey. You know, there's certainly some roadblocks in there and some adversity that you experience, but it's reminding yourself throughout the process, even though you're hungry for the next step, enjoy the step that you're at because it's critical and really important to your growth. Yeah, I'm fired up. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. <laughs>